Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are on page 97 of your student journal, and our objective for the day is, today I will multiply using the distributive property. Okay, so today I will multiply using the distributive property. Okay, let's look at what this word distributive property means in our vocab. And it says, distributive property is the product can be found by decomposing or breaking down one of the factors into smaller numbers, multiplying two new number sentences, and then adding the products. Okay, wow, that's a lot. Um, if you think about the word distribute, it means kind of to pass out, and that's what you're going to be doing, is you're gonna take one of the factors and break it into easier numbers to work with. So their example is three times 56. Well, if I break 56 up or decompose it into 50 plus six, it's easier to solve because then I can pass out or distribute. So what they've done is they've passed out the three to the 50, and they also passed out the three to the six, and they added those. So three times 50 is 150 plus three times six is 18. So when I add those, I get the product. A lot of times doing the distributive property and it helps you do work it out in your head. And some of you might have already done something like the distributive property in your head. So they tell us also what decompose means. It says break down a number into smaller parts. And they give us some examples. They give us 274 can be broke up into 100 plus 100 plus 50 plus 20 plus 4. That's really breaking our number down a little bit. Or here they broke it down just into expanded form. 200 plus 70 plus 4. This is how we are going to be decomposing, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be decomposing into expanded form. And we've talked about what that is. So when we decompose, that's going to be what we are going to be doing. We're not going to break it down farther than that. Okay, so let's look at our steps. It says we're gonna circle the greatest factor, which we did that with the area model. We're gonna rewrite the equation by decomposing the greater factor. And they give us some examples here. We are not actually going to be doing either of those. When we decompose, we are going to decompose into expanded form. That's how we're going to decompose, is into expanded form. You can do other ways, but this is how we're going to be doing it. Then we're going to distribute or pass out the lesser factor with the decomposed. And then we're gonna solve by adding those. Okay, so Pretty much we're going to be circling, then we're going to be rewriting the greater factor in expanded form, then we're going to distribute or pass out, and then we're going to be solving by adding. Okay, so I'm gonna get started and show you how I'm going to attack this. Okay, here is my first problem, and I'm going to be following these four steps, so you might wanna look at them as I do mine. Okay, my first step says I'm going to be circling the greater factor, and you'll notice this is the same problem that they gave you here, but you'll see how I chose not to use this part. So I'm gonna circle the 316, and then it says I'm gonna rewrite the equation by decomposing this, but when I decompose it, I'm going to decompose that into expanded form. So into 300 plus 10 plus six. So I decomposed it into expanded form. Step three is I'm gonna distribute or pass out my lesser factor to all of these. So I'm gonna pass it out to the 300, I'm gonna pass it out to the 10, and I'm gonna pass it out to the six. So what that's going to look like is three times 300, plus three times 10 
plus 3 times 6. So those plus signs stayed here, but the times is 3 times this. Okay, so that's what step three is. And then step four is I'm gonna solve those and then add them. Well, just like we did with the area model, I can use that kind of shortcut to help me. So three times three is nine, plus the two zeros is 900, plus three times one is three, plus one zero is 30, or maybe you just know three times 10 is 30, plus three times six is 18. So those are my partial products, and then remember I'm gonna to have to add those. I don't like to add when something's like that, so I would come over here on the side and choose to write them vertically. I think it's easier to add them that way. So I get eight, four, and nine. So my answer is 948 is my answer. Okay. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I really follow those steps closely. So as I do the next one, look at your steps with me. Okay, here is my next problem. Okay, and it says five times 617. Okay, so step one is I'm gonna circle my greater factor. And then step two is I'm gonna rewrite this by decomposing this. And I said we're gonna decompose into expanded form. So I have five times 600 plus 10 plus seven. Okay, and then step three is I'm gonna distribute. I'm gonna pass out my five to all parts. So I have five times 600 plus five times 10 plus five times seven. Okay, and then now I'm gonna solve and I need to solve these and then add them. So I know that five times six is 30 and I can add two zeros. That's how I would do that part. I know five times 10 is 50, so I can just do that. And then I know five times seven is 35. So those are my three partial products and I just need to add those together. So again, I don't like to add this way. I'm gonna come over and probably put it vertically. And I get 3,085 as my answer. Okay, so let's try some of these together, ladies and gentlemen. We're on page 97. We are on page 97 and here's our first problem. 354 times eight. 354 times eight. Okay, what you're gonna notice about this one is it's set up different than the two that we did where my lesser factor was first. I would probably change this because I'm gonna circle this, but on our examples, we had put it where the greater factor was second. But remember, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to switch them. So I would set it up this way. Okay, so step one we've already done. Step two is we're going to decompose this and we're gonna use expanded form. So I'm gonna say eight times 300 plus 50 plus four. Okay, and then step three is we're gonna distribute. We're gonna pass that out to there we're gonna pass it out to there, and we're gonna pass it out to there. We have to pass it out to each part of the factor. So what do we have? We have eight times 300 plus eight times 50 plus eight times four. Okay, in our final step, step four is we need to solve. So we need to first solve these so eight times three is 24, and we can add two zeros. Plus, this one's a little trickier. So I can say eight times five is 40, plus add one zero, plus eight times four is 32. So there's our three partial products, and then we just need to add them together. So let's come over here and we have 2,400 
plus 400 plus 32. So I get two, three, eight, two. Sorry, my three was a little sloppy there. So our answer is 2,832. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's try one more together. We have three times 426. So our first step is circle our greatest factor. Our second step is to decompose that or break it down, and we're gonna break it down into expanded form. So three times 400 plus 20 plus six. And then our third step is we are going to, now we're going to um, use the distributive property to pass that out, remember, to each one. So we have 3 times 400 plus 3 times 20 plus 3 times 6. And then our final step is we're going to solve those. So 3 times 4 is 12 and add two zeros. 3 times 2 is 6 and add one zero. And then 3 times 6 is 18. So we're still in the solving part, which I'm going to set these up vertically because it's easier for me to add them. So I get 8, 7, 2, 1. So 1,278 is our answer. Okay, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but I really like this method. This method really seems to make sense to me. So um, we're going to be learning lots of methods, but I, I think this is a pretty good one. Okay, I hope you feel the same way, but have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.